Okay. What am I without, without all my uh, stories? Well, you know, every, you know, you could say from one's past lives and from this lifetime, one has taken on so many stories, belief systems. I like to say belief systems, patterns, imprints. One, uh, you know, I, well, I take on this. <clears throat> I take on the story of uh, I was in sales. You know, you t I was taught many. Dis you know, you've got to, you've got to like, you've got to like manipulate people to make sure they say yes and, and buy stuff. And you've got sales targets, it's, it's okay, you know, if you start learning all this clever stuff, you can close them. You know, 25 techniques to get them to say yes. You know, <laughs> you know like make them say yes, like is your name, is your name Jane? You said yes, okay. I, now, do you have a bank account? Yes. Are you going to buy this? Yes. Okay, good. You see, you've got them into a close on the thing. So it, it, this kind of thing is like, all of these belief systems <clears throat> are, are stories. You know, we learn stories and belief systems from different, they're from different levels of consciousness. Like the levels of consciousness are like radio stations. Like there's radio addiction. All addicts are going to teach you the same thing. You know, like you know, like if you're if you're poor and you're a food addict, like and you're with the other food addicts, they teach you how to get free food. You know, that's what they'll they'll do. Or if you're like a con man and you're with your fellow con men, they teach you how to be dishonest, you know, because those are levels of consciousness. And as you get, and also from your past lifetimes, you're picking up all of these stories, all of these data, all of these imprints. We call them, car, you know, you could call it karma, you could call it belief systems, you could call it patterns uh, that you pick up, all these stories. So generally speaking, when you start to do spiritual work, um, you start clear, because you, you start your spiritual work at the level of consciousness you're at. You know, are you in deep levels of fear? Or are you in deep levels of anger? Are you in deep levels of shame? That's the general radio station you're at. And those are the types of thoughts you're tuning into. Radio addiction. You know, you'll have this feeling of, I need more. And you'll have certain thoughts you're picking up from the radio station, these thoughts. So you'll have these um, stories to do with each of... Because we're all part of the same collective consciousness but we're all tuned into these different stories that are banned, banded together from these different, different uh, levels of consciousness. So as you start clearing your stories, you're, you're clearing the stories of each level of consciousness. You know, you're clearing the stories associated with radio shame. Then you're clearing the stories to do with radio guilt. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so guilty, I deserve to be punished. Uh, someone, I need someone to beat me on the head or I need to like, beat myself on the head. You know, they clear the stories to do with guilt. Then you clear the stories to do with um, anger. You know, I'm, I'm so angry at myself, I'm so angry at everyone else, I'm angry at my boss. So all of those collective stories as well. And as you clear those stories, you start to get, you know, you might get to Radio Pride. You know, well, you know, don't you know how, you know, I feel so good, I've done all this spiritual work, I'm better than most people who are spiritually ignorant. So that can be radio pride. Then you're getting up into, now you, as, as you get into the more deeper spiritual realms, it becomes more subtle. The work becomes more subtle like, like we've talked about. So you're clearing away the levels of consciousness and the stories and the belief systems associated with that. Also recognizing this, you know, everything happens in divine order. As you clear one set of stories, it's like the universe will give you the next set of stories that it wants you to clear in divine order until you've cleared all your stories. Who are you? Well, for me, you know, the Course in Miracles says we're removing all the blocks to love. I would say we're removing all the blocks that are based, you know, like all the stories. Stories tend to, belief systems tend to be like thoughts, programs in consciousness. As you, as you go through those, also you pick up data, like I'm a body, you feel like you're your body, um, whatever. So you're clearing all of those things, and then you're starting to experience yourself at different levels of consciousness. You know, you experience what it's like, to, you, you know, I'll, to share my own story, there was a time when I was in deep addiction where I experienced intense fear every day. You know, it was like a cloud of fear. That's the only thing I had known my whole life, is fear, this intense fear. I had like this cloud of fear with me everywhere I went. And one day doing, it was quite miraculous, one day I felt like this blanket of fear was taken away from me, and it never came back. So I get to experience myself. I thought I was a blanket of fear. I, mm -hmm. I, I started to experience myself as, as a new self that doesn't have fear as, a, as its essence. 
And then, you know, there was this, you know, then you, if you clear away being addicted to your thinking, you start to experience yourself as, as this presence mm -hmm. and this expansive presence, which is not being in your head thinking all the time. So who am I without, my, without fear? Who am I without my belief systems? Who am I without my thinking? Who am I without the body? Who am I without attaching to the future or the past? Mm -hmm. So your experience of self changes each time you un undo a layer of something. You also start to experience the miraculous. You recognize, like, one of the mantras you could say of the ego is that the more fear and the more control and the more you think, the safer you are. You know, like if I can think at 100 miles an hour and feel really, really fearful and paranoid, that will keep me safe. You know, and, you know, addicts, uh, addicts will find that the more they're thinking and the more they're fearful, actually the more their experience is, the more life gets ter more worse. And then they try and be more fearful and think even faster to get out of that. So, but your experience is you're getting, your life's going worse. And those people who surrender the fear and surrender the thinking find that their life supports them in miraculous, miraculous ways. So actually life is letting go of all the stories. You know, actually who you are without the fear and without the stories is actually more you than you thought you were. You thought you were the fear and the stories, but when you let go of that, you find a you that is far more sublime and far more you than the you you used to think you were. Which is a paradox, because if you're in fear and negative thinking all the time, to experience your true self, you realize, no, this is my true self. That fear and negative thinking all the time, that was not my true self. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's, it's a, uh, and if you do very deep work, you'll have the miraculous experiences, and, and even deeper sublime spiritual experiences, that the source of life is actually the absence of your stories. The source of grace is the absence of, of all the things you're holding on to. The more you let go, the more life supports you. And the more you hold on and allow the engagement of the limited self, it, it seems like life takes more things away from you. 